Hello and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play of World of Tanks. Uh, one quick correction here, a commenter by the name of uh, Sleepy Joe 2 actually filled me out on a little bit of information that I didn't know. The part right here where it says 72% which is 65 plus 7, that actually comes from your commander because uh, roughly 10% of his experience gets applied to the crew themselves. So that's how I can have 72% training on this guy where it actually shows 65. So that's an interesting way of how it works out. I was also reading on how the, uh, oh no, disconnected. Let's try this again. Okay, and we're back online now. Don't know how that happened. But anyway, so the rapid training here, or the uh, retraining for specific vehicles. Uh, I had to pull up the wiki to show you how, or to read how it works here, but Obviously the 200 gold gets you to 100, or yeah, 100 percent total. The 20,000 credits per crew member trains them up to 75 if they're under 75, or if they're above, uh, and it's the same class of vehicle, then you get 90 percent of the current experience they have. And if it's a different type of vehicle, such as a heavy tank going into an SBG, you get 80. And then the same thing with the rapid training at the crew member is retraining in the same class, you get 80% of his experience that he held, and if it's a different class of vehicle, you get 60%. So it kind of worked out for what I was trying to do. But, someone recommended that I actually get the 75% training for all my crews for tier 5 tanks. But, uh, it's, it's a toss up. I honestly don't mind it being uh, new training for tier 5. Tier 6, definitely, I will be doing a uh, purchasing the crew with the higher level of training. It just makes more sense when you get to the higher tanks. You want your crew to be better so that the tanks perform better right away. I'm going to move my mic closer. There we go. So, one thing I didn't cover though is how uh, to mount equipment. As you can see here, I already have a camouflage netting mounted onto this SPG here. And it gives me a, a negative 25% bonus to being detected while stationary, which helps because then that one spots me. It's actually been noticed before and people just drive right past me. So, since I have a lot of extra credits at the moment, I'm probably going to regret this later, I'm going to go ahead to click here to add something. I'm going to go with the Shell Rammer because it takes off 10% of my reload time. So that's really going to make it quicker and easier for me to just drop shells on people because a lot of times you're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting blah 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 blah, it cannot be dismounted, it will be destroyed, I thought it cost gold, special sort gold, oh eh, yeah, well there, oh, the point was to put it on this thing anyway, so there we go, now this thing's going to be rocking, let's see, uh, let's see what we can do with this little thing now that it's loaded up with uh, the shell rammer and the cargo net, and we find ourselves at the bottom of the barrel here, which is, it's actually been a common thing for some odd reason for the past couple games or nights I've been playing. It's just, uh, I don't know, I guess more people are playing and they're playing faster and harder than I have time for, so they're getting high level tanks and I'm just little, little old me at level 4. But make the best of it and my shells will hurt on someone's head just as much as anyone else's. So we're going to go ahead and uh, crawl our way up here to my position I like to snipe from. We have a bunch of lows on our side, and lows are just awesomely powerful. It's just not even fair. I uh, I was in a game once the other night where I had whittled down a low to, I don't know, maybe 16%, and it took me almost all home. All the time I traveled from one end of the board to the other to get him down that far, and it just did not work out well. Here we go. These guys are all lining up for me. That guy just got rocked. Oh, IS-3, I'm not even going to do any damage to you. Yeah, I've noticed a lot that also with the uh, artillery, you tend to miss even if you're right on a guy. It's just, I guess, their way of compensating. Yeah, see, I missed again. I Maybe I should aim closer away from them. I seem to have lost my knack for aiming at guys. I don't know if it's just my skill or just it really is that difficult to hit people nowadays or what the story is. Him I can't hit. He's behind a rock. This guy, on the other hand, probably can don't know how uh, much damage I'm going to do to him, but lead him just a bit, as he is a little far away and he is moving, and I shot a little too far ahead. Yeah, see, that's just, I can have it centered on him completely, it just doesn't go where I want it to be. Don't know why, it's just, that's the way it works. Again, same spot. Oh well, so we're just going to keep trying, but yeah, that's a noticeably faster reload rate. 
I keep thinking I'm going to be running out of ammo more often now. There we go. Now we hit him. So yeah, the uh, camouflage netting certainly is helping me keep hidden from all these guys. Which uh, really makes a difference. And I hit that guy again even though I can't see him. He's probably moved again so I can't uh, really target him this time. I'm going to head and uh, try to assist all our teammates over here who are probably getting hit pretty hard. KV3 is down so now we need to focus on the IS. Which I don't think I'm going to have the ability to hit. I don't know. We'll see. There we go. Got him pretty good. But yeah, so artillery seems to be a little, a little weaker than what I remember for whatever reason. But I guess it's all fair because artillery is fairly powerful. Can't be landing 100% accurate shells all the time. But whatever, they make the best of it. So yeah, I was also uh, thinking about how tactics work in this game, and if you really wanted to get into it tactics in this game pretty much just apply to real life in terms of like holding down your tank like look at this guy he's holed down behind a rock I cannot hit him no matter how hard I want to try he probably has a great angle shooting up through this way I'll probably demonstrate this when I actually switch to one of my main battle tanks but any tank tactic that was applied in normal everyday real life can probably be applied to a uh, world of tanks I mean it's the tanks simulate for the most part, so I don't see why he wouldn't. As we try and scope onto this guy real oh no, that's way too far. But yeah, so it's it's an interesting uh, there's some interesting things you can do with holding down on hills, getting behind wrecks, and of course sandwiching guys if you really have to because you run out of ability to uh, damage them or you're a lot of weak guys against one really heavy guy. Oh, gosh darn it. Well, we're getting them. It's just taking a little bit. Gosh, that loads so fast. Hey, I got him. It's so awesome how fast it loads now. Repeat bombardment all day long. Nope, miss. So yeah, like this guy, he's going down the hill, so he's now going to have a greater advantage of hitting these guys as they will, well didn't work out for him but in theory if he's only exposing his hole whereas they can I don't know how I missed him but yeah if he's only exposing his hole whereas they're exposing their whole body to him he has a much greater advantage additionally if you're on the move I've done this quite often and I I really shouldn't I stop dead center in the middle of nothing with no cover and just shoot and shoot and shoot hoping that I can outgun them what I should do is stop, shoot, run, stop, shoot, run. And you can actually use the space bar to toggle there for lack of better terms, an emergency break. So that way it stops you so you can continually return fire and then get on the move as soon as your uh, shot's complete. So that way you're not stuck in the open and you're continually moving so they have to keep aiming at you and thus hopefully they're aim is off and they'll miss you more often than you'll miss them. There we go. Took me quite a while to land that hit. Sheesh. You'd think I wasn't trying or something. Oh, they have one tank left. I don't even know where he's at. Oh, he's all the way back here. Am I going to get the shot off? Nope. So, we're going to switch to a normal tank now so I can demonstrate what I was talking about, or at least attempt to. I really can't stress this enough, but there is so much information on the uh, World of Tanks wiki that just it gives you every little thing you need to know about this game ranging from tactics to the way that the matching works like for example me being in the uh, excuse me in the M3 Lee ugh don't know what that was sorry guys yeah so me being in the M3 Lee I uh, should be facing anywhere from tier 3 stuff all the way to tier 7, I want to say. Yeah, tier 7. But that's because I'm a medium tier 4 tank. So it's one under, and then an, I believe four above. Between three and four above. I'd have to I'd have to look at the actual algorithm, but they have a nice handy chart that shows you exactly what uh, tiers you should be expecting to face in terms of uh, what tank you're playing. 
So like a tier 4 light tank, like the Leopard or the Stuart 5, that will face pretty much everything. Everything under the sun, because you become the official designated scout. Whereas SPGs, seeing as they hit the top armor all the time, they should be fighting, well, depending on what they are, like the tier 4 that was just playing the Priest, he should be seeing upwards of tier probably 8. So each tank has its own little bell curve as to who they should be facing. And I guess they can be thrown off a little bit by parties, but not much. But again, that's that's all shown at World of Tanks uh, wiki. Now, in terms of tactics, this tank is not the best option because this is a tank destroyer with none of the benefits. I can't tell you how many times I wish I actually was able to use the top turret on this thing. The top turret would give me so much of an advantage and the fact that oftentimes people get around behind me and they're down to like 2% hit points. What I'd be able to do with that 45 millimeters just unreal. I'm kind of just stretching out here as it should be. Yeah, I probably should be back more. But they say to be using, you know, use buildings to your advantage. Hide behind them. Obviously you should. You just poke out a little shoot, return back behind them. You shouldn't just drive up in the open like I was. So like this. I now have a much better hole profile for shooting anything around this corner. Of course, the problem is if I want to branch out to shoot someone right here, I can't. I have to swing my whole tank around. Uh-oh. Here we go. I need to back up a bit so I don't get hit. There we go. Use the, use the building to my advantage, so I'm only taking one at a time if I have to. Uh-oh. I'm getting hit from behind. Uh, what did I get hit by? I don't know, but my building's getting whittled down, and there's not much around me to save me. Okay, so we're going to try that with an actual turreted tank, so that I can just demonstrate a little better than this, uh, the Lee. I really haven't figured out much tactics to that thing yet. Go. So my heavily upgraded, uh, T-3457 now, because I had the, uh, what is this thing, the 42? Yeah, the OBR-42 turret up there? Yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. It's pretty much a sniper tank. I can't guarantee I do much damage, but... It sounds like every hit's a penetration, and it sure scares people when I do hit them. But yeah, this, uh, some of the tactics are obviously don't run over trees because it gives away your position, because nothing says I'm here like trees falling down all around you. But they also say to, like, hug your terrain, because now, as you can see, I have a better angle over here, whereas I'm not exposed from this flank on. I can see more stuff and it's better and easier for me to hit them as it would be for them to hit me. Another thing is to use hold down things to your advantage. So if I can somehow get behind a rock where half my tank is blocked and only my turret's sticking out, then I'm doing pretty hot because I, uh, I'm only exposing a certain percentage of my tank, just my turret. And honestly on the, uh, the T-34, the turret on this thing's actually more armored than the hull itself, so it's more beneficial. See, like right now, I want to be back more hugging the terrain. I also want to use the IS as cover for me, because the IS is much heavier armor than me. Ooh, gee. Yeah, the IS-3 I'm not going to be able to do anything against. So I want to probably back out and not bother wasting my time. But yeah, if I hug terrain, I have left less exposed armor. Additionally, as you can see here, I want to be turned to face, not flat at them. I want to have almost a 45 degree angle to them so that my shots have a, or their shots have a better chance of bouncing off me because your angle of your uh, shot is what makes a difference. Obviously if they are shooting directly at you, it's going to be a flat uh, surface and that's how tank shells penetrate is by hitting a flat surface. If they hit a curved angle like this, there's a good chance it will just glance off and just uh, not penetrate and do damage. Of course, that didn't help much, so I was just shot, and uh, damage was dealt to me anyway. Uh-oh, this is not good. I'm probably gonna get wrecked. Oh no, I got him pretty good too. So yeah, that was my best chance there, was to sit angled and hope for the best. Of course, it didn't work out for me. We'll see what happens in my other tanks. This map actually should give us the perfect example of what I've been talking about this whole time. So we just need to get into town to use my uh, examples here. I'm going to have to crush through the wall to get there, using my PZ-4. PZ-4 is going to be a pain, because I I want to go the Panther route, 
But to be fair, I do have to show every tank, and so I have to play this thing about six times longer than I want to, because the PZ-4 unlocks quite a few tanks. And I'm sorry about all those chimes that you keep hearing. And I, do you think by now I would uh, be smart and silence my phone? But no, no, let's just leave my phone on, you know, standard ring so everyone can hear it whenever they uh, text me. So yeah, not exactly the best viewing angle here. Plus there's not really much to see here. We're gonna go up. But as we see here, the uh, KV has the right idea. He's sitting there on the wall, half exposed, because you have to expose yourself a little. But also, hanging back just enough so you can pull back. The guy's already flanking. So what I'm gonna do is slowly creep up just enough. I can actually see the shot. He doesn't see me yet, but I'll pull back when I need to. So he's out of my line of sight now. He was originally right here. But yeah, now I have the ability to uh, turn the face a bit. There we go. Now I'm flush with this wall facing. Shoot, pull back, return. Shoot, pull back, return. That's what the objective is here. Of course, we don't see anyone poking out yet, but still. I've got myself a nice little defendable choke point. He still hasn't faced me yet. I can still get one more shot off before I gotta return. There we go, return. See, and he missed me. There we go, pull back. I got hit there because I wasn't pulling back fast enough. Return. Ready for the next guy. Got it. See, it works out for me pretty well, actually. See, and he's using that other tank to his advantage. So I have to, uh,. He's using the hold down approach with the enemy tank as his cover. See, I can't see him now because he's behind that tank. And my gun's down. So I'm going to have to back out for a bit and let that get repaired. But that's another tactic, is if you're bigger than the uh, tank that you're sitting next to, obviously your turret's just sticking out. So you got that advantage, whereas uh, I would have to aim around it. And it didn't work. It worked the one time, but not the second. So I can no longer afford to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I'm going to have to back out here and wait. Oh, God. We're done for. Now I hit him, but I didn't kill him. Still, that kind of showed you some of the tactics I was talking about that worked out for me pretty well. I was able to take out the uh, Sherman, and I was able to do a lot of damage to that KV. Looks like we're going to win this one. So we're going to give, uh, going to see if we can't implement some more tactics in another board here. Again, I could show the whole angles and hu hugging buildings and hiding behind buildings here. Kind of already showed that. What I was hoping for was that desert board. But we'll just have to take another approach to this sort of thing here. Now, on this board, I'm going to reveal my top secrets here, even though it's not really a secret. I like to get up on top of this hill after I clear it and be able to shoot down right along uh, this area here, down here on the D or if you're on the other side, on the G side. Because a lot of people just like to sit there and camp. But if you're on top of this hill, you can shoot down on top of tanks. You go, little BT-7. You clear it for me. And this is going to be a good game because I'm a heavy tank with a much nicer gun than all these guys. So yeah, so slowly climb up here. You can see my angle of attack is a much better uh, angle than theirs. If this was a steeper hill, I'd be able to point down more like that just at the uh, crest of a hill, they'd only see a slight uh, percentage of my tank because I'm pulled down to them, which is actually a common tactic used by uh, tank combat today. I think World War II everywhere, it's common tactic. You sit there, hold down so that uh, only a uh, minimum is exposed. And the only problem is when you start cresting, ooh, that one tank's gonna be able to shoot a lot of their artillery, hopefully. Uh, that makes my job easier. Here we have some stuff coming up. Not a whole lot that I can do. Oh, wow, this is a huge army. It's an easy three. I should be able to get him. There's another. I missed. So we're going to actually uh, not move like I say to. A lot of easy threes. So we're actually going to keep backing down so they don't get us. He rammed us and killed himself. So he's getting around behind me, which is not going to be good. 
So he's gonna be able to do more damage to me from behind. I missed. Oh no! That was just general swarming. There's not a whole lot I could do about that. When you get swarmed like that, you're supposed to just keep backing up, but I got tracked and I couldn't back up. But yeah, when you get swarmed, obviously the swarming tanks are trying to get behind you or you're weaker. But if you're getting swarmed and you know it, you need to back up. Because if hopefully backing up, you can be able to at least take down one or two of the swarming tanks. So let's try in one last one and see what happens. This video is actually getting pretty long. It might be one of my longer videos. We're already at 20 some odd minutes. And I guess that means this will be my last one here. But yeah, so this should give us a good example here. I'll try and demonstrate it really quick before I get in position. But yeah, as you can see a hill here, I have a much better advantage by coming up just slowly up here, being able to shoot people as they come up the hill. One problem though is when you start coming up the hill you expose yourself. Because someone could be right here where I can't aim underneath my line of fire and be able to hit me from underneath. That that's when you really need to be careful about cresting hills. They can work for you and they can work against you. You can use them to go hold down on if your turret can tra traverse and I'm running over trees, one thing I said not to do. Uh, if you can traverse your turret down enough, you certainly gain the advantage because you can uh, sit there, hold down halfway up the hill, only exposing the top of your tank and your turret. But when you're cresting the hill because you need to get over it, you are exposing yourself. And that is a very, very dangerous thing for people who are on the bottom of the hill. Now here, we're just going to run ahead. But yes, yeah, so with heavier tanks, you really want to try and swarm to get behind them. There's no sense going toe to toe and duking it out. I, I haven't played a tank destroyer in a while. I've been playing simply my uh, medium tanks here. But with tank destroyers, you kind of want to hang back and be that sniper, taking out tracks where you can, shooting for crew hatches generally assisting. You do not want to run ahead. That is what the scouts in these main battle tanks are for. They're for uh, getting up here, doing the damage that they can. Right here we have a heavy. I have to uh, T1 heavy. I don't know what I can do to him. Can't even see him now. Still can't see that guy either. So yeah, we want to move, shoot, move, shoot. Swarm tanks to get to the rear if we're fast enough when we're a light tank. I should be heavy enough that I can take him out from the front, even though theoretically you shouldn't chance it. At this range though, I don't think there's much option but to stand and shoot and hope for the best. And no damage or damage, I can't tell. Ricochet! Ricochet. But yes, yeah, so... It's generally uh, how you want to do things. Oh, you're kidding me, he's still alive. I was going to say, someone needs to get him. Of course, now I'm exposed, so I'm going to retreat. So yeah, use the terrain to your advantage. Go for the best shots that are going to give you the best chances. Obviously, if you know you're outclassed, don't even bother. Just run past him and go for either a different tank or go for the objective. Because sitting there getting killed isn't going to help your team. Um, aim for crew hatches. Move and shoot. Don't stand still. Use cover to your advantage, use buildings to your advantage, use other tanks to your advantage too. I can stand here if I really want to and use this tank to my advantage, shooting over him and having him absorb rounds for me. Which isn't a good thing, but when he dies it certainly is. But yeah, that's that's generally what you want to do. Is use everything you can to your advantage. Like right now I'm shooting over him, so I'm pretty good. You should be able to hit him before he'll hit me. Of course, now he backs up. So I'm going to try and use this tank to my advantage now. So we move, stop, fire, and I missed. I should have uh, checked my shot better. I don't know where he's at. There he is. So we're going to use this tank to our advantage here. Try and locate on him here. I think he just fired through this tank. We're gonna go ahead and try and move up to get to his side. Remember to keep angles at the person as well. 
That way their shot has a better chance of glancing off you. Yes. We're just going to keep moving and firing, hoping for the best. Our track is hit. It could break any minute. Critical Still at an angle. Gotcha. Got him. And that's how you do it. So now we're going to move into the base and hopefully take out the remaining... Ooh, they have tons of people in our base. I'm going to try to return, actually. Or I should cap, probably. Probably should cap. So we're going to go ahead and cap. But yeah, so... I'm going to close out there. I haven't plugged it uh, lately, but I'd really appreciate it if you guys would check out that Heroes of Armageddon page with the uh, chance to win uh, miniature armies uh, for Warhammer 40,000. Even if you're not into it, the donation certainly goes to a good cause. I know I'm going to. Uh, it's Doctors Without Borders. It's a really good cause. I wish I knew more about it to really plug it, but I'll put their... Uh, the link to the description of the uh, event and also the link to two people who were involved, their personal blogs, Dave Taylor and uh, one other person that you've actually heard here play with me before, Brian Delana, Delaney. So, uh oh, he got hit. Where did he get hit from? This guy. Stop. Aim. Fire. Move. Stop. Aim. Move. So yeah, if you guys would check that out, I mean, you don't have to, obviously, but if you, if you know anyone that's interested, please go ahead and recommend it to them. It's it's a worthy cause. And that guy totally wrecked me. So yeah, it's a worthy cause. I'd greatly appreciate if you check it out, or at least suggest it to people you think might be interested. So with that, I'm going to uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, hopefully this, this tactic, even though not a lot really worked for me, and I tried to abide by them. It's one of those things where you just got to do it and get it drilled into you. It takes time. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I want to thank you guys uh, for taking the time out. If you would take a quick second to rate and subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. I guess I will catch you guys in the next episode.